one of the, the components we were just talking about was, was looking at aggregate stability, um, how water stable those aggregates actually are. And within this demonstration, what we did is we actually uh, filled up water uh, within the jars that we were talking about. Again, you can see the screens are submerged uh, within each jar. And what we're actually going to do is, is place uh, two clods. Of course, one is uh, a conventionally tilled and one is a no-till clod. Uh, and demonstrate the difference between um, having something that's very water sa uh, stable uh, and, and something that has a very poor aggregate stability. And typically, when you, when you look at this from, from any standpoint, um, this is a conventionally tilled clod. And you can see that there are no pores um, in the uh, no-till clod. You can actually see there's actually wormholes within the clod itself. Um, and that's something that we re uh, want to look at. But the other thing that you need to, to keep in mind is as you pick out and, and use a, a clod from a conventionally tilled field, the question is, is this clod actually from uh, the soil matrix itself or is it from a, uh, or developed from compaction? And that's not going to actually work very well within this demonstration and those cohesive forces by smashing uh, the pore space out is actually going to, to look as though it has good aggregate stability and that's really not uh, something we want to demonstrate. So anyway, what the, the demonstration goes like this, uh, the no-till clod, uh, some of the things that you actually you'll look at very quickly here is that we're going to be moving water into the clod itself. Air will actually come out. Of course, we've talked this about this before. There's a lot of pore space. About half of this, the, the soil matrix is pore space. So as, as we immerse that clod, you can actually see that, that uh, the bubbles actually coming up, uh, that water actually coming up, or that uh, water rushing in, the air coming out. And then we'll immerse our, our uh, conventionally tilled clod also. And in both cases, we're actually looking at this thing. We're actually seeing soil particles fall off. However, the question is, is to what extent are we actually talking about uh, the clods actually falling apart and how cohesive that actually is over time. So let's just look at uh, um, this demonstration and follow it through here. Okay, after we've uh, let this sit for a while, you can actually see that there's some, some differences in, in uh, um, clarity is associated with two samples. Uh, typically, if we start really looking at uh, good samples for collection is, is when you look at the conventionally tilled uh, uh, samples. If you have samples that uh, were recently broke out of sod, etc., uh, they really won't show this demonstration very well. So what we want to do is collect samples that have been conventionally tilled for long periods of time so that we can actually look at those that have, have poor aggregate stability. Again, as you start looking at that that aggregate stability that the, the issues associated with it will end up with clarity differences within our samples. Um, in many cases, you're going to have to let this run for a few minutes uh, before you actually really start to see some of those differences. Again, picking out your samples is really important within this, this demonstration. One of the other components of the model we're actually talking about is looking at capillary action through soils. And the demonstration that we actually have is, as I mentioned before, is we have a bulletin holder, basic piece of plastic, with a paper towel in it, we're going to actually look at, of course, water movement upward, in other words, against gravity associated with uh, this paper towel as a demonstration. Again, as I mentioned before, you can actually submerge it either as it is, or you can put uh, uh, food coloring uh, just to make it show up better uh, within the, the, the uh, demonstration. We're going to do that, put a few drops in, mix it up a little bit. And as you can imagine, um, water is going to move up the, the paper towel as we demonstrate and talk about capillary uh, activity. We've let this sit a few minutes, and you can actually see the amount of, of, of uh, capillary activity we actually have uh, now within this demonstration. And again, this, this demonstration, we probably should let it go for a few minutes. So I, I would recommend we start it fairly early, and that way it gives us an opportunity to see uh, capillary flow in action over time. And we can do this with a paper towel, or we can actually do this with a, a soil volume also and, and look at water movement up in that uh, um, soil column.